Hey guys, it's time for a transmission fluid change. You can pause the video to read these safety points. Let's get started by removing the air vent in the front. It has two push pins. You just have to push in the center. It unlocks. You put the screwdriver in on the side and push it up and you can remove it very easily. And after this, the first air vent should easily come out. Pull it to your, towards your left and it should be out. And then you have to remove the air box, you have three 10 millimeter bolts, one on the front and two at the back, one there and one more there. So let's go ahead and remove the three 10 millimeter bolts to access, we are trying to access this particular fill board for the transmission. And to remove the screw, it, it uses PH3, that's Phillips head bit 3, and you can easily remove the screw, which is on top of the air box, as shown here. Let's go ahead and remove three 10 millimeter bolts. I'm using a ratchet and an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. And then wiggle the A box, it should easily come out. Just a little bit of force to your towards your right and the A box should pop out. Like that. I'm gonna cover the holes of the air box with a ziplock cover so that there's no no dust gets in and it's all clean. Let's remove the transmission fill board on the top here. I'm using an extension with a 3/8 drive. And as you can see, the transmission fill board hesitates to come out because there's a shifter or some kind of part in front of it which is blocking it because of which I need to figure out an alternative way to open it. It hesitates. I initially tried using a cutting ply which is pretty sharp to cut the side of the transmission board but it didn't work and then I uh, went to the shear garden cutter as well and that didn't work as well. I didn't want to break the transmission board by putting out too much force. And what finally worked? Filing. So I got this cool filing kit which worked extremely well. I started off filing initially using a triangular file. And I placed a ziplock cover just below the transmission board so that you know, I can catch the uh, pieces from the filing. And every now and then I used to just you know, make sure it's clean and put the ziplock back and file again. So initially I was using the triangular file and then I went and used the rectangular file after which I used a semicircle file which was circular on one side and flat on the other side to finish off the job and this worked very well one has to be really patient I took about one hour to one and a half one and a half hours to do this job be really patient on this go easy don't put too much force and you should be good Filing done. And finally, I was able to get the bolt out. As you can see, it has been fired in the side in a small semicircle fashion, so it easily comes out, as shown here. Let's get under the car. You have a lot of push pins around the undercover of the car. You have four 10 millimeter bolts in the front and three 10 millimeter bolts at the back. And to remove the push pins, all that you need to do is put the screwdriver in the center and push it downwards, as shown here. Put it in the center, push it downwards. Once it's once it pops out, you can easily remove it. Pull it out, and it should it should remove it easily. Now I'm going and going ahead and removing the 10 millimeter bolt in the center. But I've already removed most of the 10 millimeter bolts and all the push pins. This video is just to show you how exactly you can do it. As you can see here, the 10 millimeter bolts, 
goes on to these four holes in the front. First one, second one, third one, and the fourth one. And then all around you have push pins that are located and the way you remove it is exactly how I showed you earlier. These are all the push pins. And on the back, that's a 10 millimeter board push pin, second 10 millimeter board, and the third 10 millimeter board. Let's do our first drain. Make sure the fill bolt on the transmission is open so that there's easy airflow and the transmission fluid comes out very easily. I'm using a torque wrench here. Uh, with a 15 16 inch socket and the factory foot pounds on this particular drain bolt was less than 30 pound foot pounds because i had set the uh, foot pounds on the torque wrench to 30 foot pounds i was easily able to remove the drain bolt break the drain bolt unscrewing it always make sure to use gloves to protect your hand The fluid, is, fluid comes out and the fluid looks a little dark. There's a hint of red as well in this. It doesn't look all that bad. And there's the break in materials is caught by the magnet. You can see the metallic particles captured by the magnet. I'll go ahead and clean it now. I've cleaned the magnet. It's free from all the metallic particles. I'm going to change the crush washer. I'm going to, I have two different crush washers. One, one a thick one and one a thin one. The thick one is one mm thick. I'm going to use that because I'm sure it's going, to, uh, it's going to seal the drain bolt pretty well. And as you can see, the old crush washer down there, it the drain bolt leaves an impression. So every time you reuse it, the impression is going to get deeper and deeper and it's going to ultimately break the crush washer in my opinion, which is why I recommend to always change the crush washer. The thin one, I'm not going to use it. It's thin. Clean the surface, put the drain bolt back on, and I'm gonna I'm talking it to 30 foot pounds. Since I'm using a new crush washer, I should have no issues with this. Once I hear it click, I'm gonna stop. I'm good. And the fluid does look dark. Let's measure the fluid that came out. I'm using a 5 quart jug and a long funnel, carefully pouring the fluid into the container. Be patient, do it slowly and measure the exact quantity. And you can see some metallic particles, black particles left behind. I'll show you this again later. Make sure the container is at level. I'm using a level, level check here to measure the quantity of fluid that, I, that came out of the transmission. It's about 3.1 quarts. I'm going to put back 3 quarts inside. And you can see the old fluid has a lot of metallic particles. The black particles inside are from the break-in of the transmission. I'm going to wipe this off so that you can exactly see how it looks on the tissue. I'm also going to collect some new fluid in and let's compare. That looks dark. Can 
you can see the new fluid is bright red, looks all clean, and the old fluid is dark. I'm glad I did this change. Let's go ahead and fill the fluid now. I'm using Amsoil 100% synthetic transmission fluid. This is absolutely compatible with Hyundai. It has SP4, SP4 M as well, which is the, the latest specification from Hyundai. And at the end of the video, I have a small portion which where I talk about why I did not use Valvoline Max Life ATF and a small little bit of confusion that I had. You can watch that at the end. So the first quad goes in, in with the second quad. And I believe from 2017 onwards, uh, the fill, uh, fill port is quite wide. So the fluid goes in very nicely. Make sure the funnel, the tip, the end of the funnel is uh, small, smaller than the fill port like I have used. And so that you can uh, carefully put the fluid in and it, it does, it does not bubble out. There's no air that comes out. It goes in nicely. You can make this fast as well. The third part going in. Putting the fill bolt back. Make sure you align the file piece of the fill bolt so it goes in like that. I'm going to bring the camera closer. So once it's in, slightly turn it to the left so it goes all the way in. Like that. Now use your extension with a 3 8 inch drive, lock it in and all that you need to do is turn it 90 degrees to your right. You cannot tighten it any further, it locks into one place and at that point you're done. You're good to go. Like that. Putting the air filter assembly back. It's the same way how you took it out. Just align it with the holes. Just pop it in. Make sure the notch is aligned right next to the screw there. Like that. It should easily sit. Make sure all the holes are in line with the air filter box. Go ahead and put the put the three 10 millimeter bolts. And tighten it. And at the end, again, use the PH3 Phillips head bit to tighten the screw as well. Okay, good there. Now the vent also places in very easily, very easy to put in. Once this is in place, take the push pins, make sure that there are, you know, the inside part of the push pin is out halfway, and then you can push the remaining part inside like that. Same thing for the second one. And then all that you need to do is push it in and you're good. Make sure to screw this screw as well using a PH3 Phillips head bit. Let's go through all the gears. My car had about 31,000 miles uh, when I did this first train. Make sure to go through all the gears, park, reverse, neutral, drive, manual as well and go back, drive, neutral, reverse, park. I did this for like five to six seconds for each gear. You can do the entire cycle three to four times. Let's put the undercover back. You have a small plastic piece at the end of the undercover. Make sure it's in line. That's what I did initially. 
and then just hold it in place and start putting the 10 millimeter bolt start with the center one once you put the center one it should be in place and then you can get another car and put the remaining bolts and the push pins back Second drain coming up. I drove about 75 miles uh, before this particular drain. And also one more thing to note, all the drains and fills that I've done when I'm draining the fluid, I, 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 it was, the engine was cold and the transmission was cold as well. So that way the, the amount of fluid that I measure uh, doesn't change because transmission fluid expands when it's heated up. That's one thing to note. As you can see, the fluid looks a lot better. It's, it's more red in color. And on the left top hand side, you can see the first drain as well. You can compare the both. The first one looked darker and the second one looks a lot better. And it had very less metallic particles that was captured this time around, which I cleaned it off. I'm glad you know I'm doing this multiple times so that more and more metallic particles are being captured by the magnet. And ultimately I'll be left with clean fluid inside. Let's check the condition of the second drained fluid. It looks a lot better than the first. It's less darker. Let's do the third drain. I drove about 200 miles uh, before this particular drain. Again, the transmission and the engine is cool. I'm taking my time here because I'm getting ready to catch a portion of the fluid uh, for sampling. I will be sending it for an oil analysis test. Just curious to know how the condition of the mixed fluid is. And also after the first drain fill I had about 42% of new fluid inside. And after the second drainage fill, I had about 65%. And now finally, I will have about 80% new fluid inside my transmission. Here we go. The fluid looks a lot cleaner, more red, almost as equivalent uh, to the fluid that came out of the second drain. The first drain is on in the, in the top left. The bottom left is the second drain. Fluid for the sample. You are good. Replacing the crush washer, before that clean the magnet. As you can see it, it always leaves an impression so I always make sure to replace it. I don't want it to break and you know, create a leak. Put that back. This is just the sample that I collected. Looks quite red. This one has about 65% new fluid inside. The condition of the fluid, it looks a lot better. Definitely more red. Make sure to put the air box and undercover as well and check for leaks and go through all the case as usual. And let's go for a test drive, a small review. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth 
crypt scare and finally six care this one is while entering on the highway second gear third gear fourth gear fifth gear and finally sixth gear smooth shift all around Some extra information on checking the fluid level and why I did not use valvoline ETF and some random calculations. To check the level of the transmission fluid, make sure the car is at level and there is a fill plug port which can be removed using a ratchet and a 1 8 inch drive. Once you remove a light stream should come out of the transmission and that's when you know that the transmission fluid is at level. And there's some more details on to your left, please read them in order to follow. My reason for not using Valvern is this. If somebody can you know, answer this question of mine and leave a comment in the comment section, it would be great. As you can see, uh, the, this particular ATF is compatible with Honda Acura ATF Z1 and DW1 as well. And SP2 and Hyundai SP2, SP3, SP4, SP4, 4M, 4RR as well. But my confusion here is ATF Z1 from Honda and SP2 and SP3 from Hyundai are thicker in viscosity whereas DW1 from Honda and SP4, SP4, 4M, 4RR from Hyundai or Kia are thinner in viscosity. I'm not sure how Valvoline is trying to say that uh, one fluid fits all even the lower viscosity fluid which are fuel efficient and the higher viscosity fluids. So if somebody can you know put, place a comment down below and answer this question of mine how one particular fluid can be compatible with the thicker fluids and the thinner fluids as well that would be great and I'm sorry to rectify this particular issue they have two different ATFs this one is the one this this ATF handles the thicker viscosity fluids as you can see it just has the Honda Acura ATF Z1 and Hyundai Kia SP2 and SP3 and this is another type of ATF by Amsol which is which is what I used in this particular car this is for the thinner uh, fuel efficient viscosity fluids. As you can see, this one has Honda Acura DW1 separately and Hyundai Kia SP44, SPH4, SP4RR, and SP4M separately. So these two different fluids are separated out by Ampsoil, which is exactly why I use this particular fluid and on top of the OEM. You can always go with the OEM and you should have no problems with it. And that is one of the reasons why I did not go with MaxLeft ATF by Valvoline. This is the table I created to calculate the percentage of new fluid that's inside my transmission. As you can see, I'm at drain and fill number three. So right now I have about 80% uh, new fluid inside. And interestingly, you have to do drain and fill procedures 10 times to get about 99.5% uh, new fluid inside a transmission. It's just a funny, interesting uh, calculation that I came up with. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Have a good day.